Welcome to All, All for, for One Stories. Stories. The story you will be listening to is The Mystery of Doctor Watson by Sean Fitzpatrick. Sherlock Holmes lowered his newspaper with a sharp rustle over the remains of our breakfast table, shattering the dull silence of the late morning. I glanced over the rim of my coffee cup to find Holmes's eyes flashing at me through the dense cloud of tobacco smoke that had lately been forming with furious intent behind the screen of the Times. I said nothing, noting with considerable satisfaction that my friend's razor-like face did not bear that familiar, half-smiling, half-sardonic air that signalized an intellectual discovery. Instead, Holmes appeared flustered and bothered, a look I knew well, but did not usually welcome as I did on that particular morning. Holmes knocked the ashes out of his black clay pipe over his ruined breakfast and seized his disputatious cherry wood. He stuffed it full of the plugs and dottles carefully preserved from the previous day and set up a fresh plume of smoke. I continued to make a show of enjoying my coffee, making no remark, and concealing my delight that Holmes was so obviously nettled. Suddenly my friend's adamantine features relaxed to their customary poise which set me immediately on my guard. I knew enough of my friend's methods to notice the significance of a changing face. "'My dear Watson,' said he, half closing his eyes and setting his finger ends together, "'surely there is no reason to continue this game of cat and mouse that has kept us so pleasantly engaged all morning, much to the disadvantage of Mrs. Hudson's excellent ham and eggs. I feel that they, superior as they are, have not managed to hold their own in the chase. I leaned back in my chair, looking inquisitively at Holmes. My dear fellow, I'm sure I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Well, Watson, I will be the first to admit that you are a veritable Sisyphus for your patience in being the object of any small displays of my art within these rooms, although I have never quite understood the purpose of ranking modesty among the virtues— being a strict logician who cringes to see truth obscured in any way, I must acknowledge that there is something noble in the fact that you, Watson, have faithfully recorded some of these exhibitions of mine, which were entirely at your expense in the literature you have dedicated to our little experiences together. I gathered my brows low over my eyes to bury the gleam that I knew must have shown there. Holmes, if this is a prelude to another one of your tricks of inference— in which you only intend to make me out to be a fool, I warn you that the day may come when you prove in the wrong. Ah, with all due respect, Doctor, I sincerely doubt it. I also beg to correct you on one small point. It is never my intention to make you seem a fool. On the contrary, Watson, I am making you a partner in genius. Though you may not be yourself luminous, you do invariably manage to throw light into darkness by your ingenious manners. He held me in a gaze beneath which I had seen hardened criminals melt away in an instant. I pride myself, therefore, that I did not shirk from the duel in which we were locked. Oh, come off it, Holmes. Let's hear what brilliant observations you have about me this morning. But just you keep my warning in mind. It would be my pleasure. It is nothing to boast of that I have noticed a few out-of-the-ordinary things about your toilet this morning, Watson. To begin with, you are unshaven, which is not your habit in the beast. You have not put on your cufflinks, which is most singular. You have put one of your black Oxford shoes on your right foot, which is regular enough, yet on your left you wear your brown country boot, which is downright irregular. But the crowning feature of all these unique features, my dear Watson, is that you have parted your hair to the left as opposed to the right, which entirely goes against your custom. Now, before I speak further on any of these points and attempt to bring their obscurity to the light of day, I would pray you to answer me one question. With all my heart. Why have you arranged yourself in this bizarre and haphazard fashion, Watson? Holmes abruptly inclined his body over the table as though balancing a foil. My mind, which had been racing with pleasure, came to a blank halt. I was ready, I learned all at once and all too late, for anything save a direct question demanding an explanation for my ridiculous appearance. Well, Holmes, I stammered, feeling suddenly self-conscious and cornered. I was, well, I don't know what to say, confound it. 
to tell you the truth, I was trying to trick you. What? Trying to trick me, Watson? Yes, I was. I was trying to have you think that there was something wrong when there wasn't. To see what you would infer from it all and so pull one over on you when I told you that all your reasonings and deductions about my person amounted to nothing whatsoever. I just wanted to enjoy seeing you grapple with a mystery that had no meaning behind it and then have the last laugh for once. Just as I thought. Once again, Watson, you have unambiguously validated my favorite axiom. Once the impossible is dismissed, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Up shot the newspaper with a crack. I was left glowering at Sherlock Holmes's smoke signals of victory that curled over the top of the headlines with nothing but the poor consolation of cold coffee and an absurd costume at my disposal. I excused myself with a rattle of china and retired to my bedroom with what little dignity he had left me. Five minutes later we were seated across from each other before the fire, and, to the credit of my staid companion, we shared a hearty laugh over the morning's lock. It was not often that I was able to enjoy the risible nature of my cold-blooded companion, who typically seemed more of a machine than a man. But he did give in to rare moments of mirth, and I enjoyed them, whenever they emerged, as a novelty. It was after eleven on that keen October morning when we heard the bell sound below us. Up to that moment I had never felt regret at the interruption or onset of any case on which I was privileged to accompany this extraordinary colleague of mine. But I admittedly felt a tinge of it that morning, when the ring put an end to our cheery confabulations. That was The Mystery of Dr. Watson by Sean Fitzpatrick. Directed by Gretelyn Darkey. The cast, in order of appearance, Father Wolfston Clough as Dr. Watson. Dennis Jers as Sherlock Holmes. Our audio technician was Thomas Marinchek. Thank you for listening to All, All for, for One, One Stories. First published in Gilbert Magazine, a publication of the American Chesterton Society. A production of We Are One Body Audio Theater.